Good morning, church. Good to see everyone, and it's a joy to be here. Toby said something about you preaching today. I, he said something about solid rock. I said, well, they need a break too. So, so uh, we're here to, Brother Barry called and asked uh, to come this Sunday because he's going to be gone. And we really appreciate the opportunity. It's always good to come back to Highland. We uh, just have so much here that we think about every time we pass by the building out there, think about things that happened over the years and how everything come about. I don't know exactly the guy, the young man's name. Y'all know it better than I do. But there was a young man that had heart trouble in his church and they said he had a hole in his heart. They sent him to Vanderbilt, I believe it was up there in Nashville, and they got up there and they done what they're supposed to do, x-rays or what have you. They said, I don't see why, they, why he's here because we can't find no hole in this young man's heart. But what they didn't know, maybe they didn't know, is the church came together in prayer and prayed and God answered that prayer. And he will, he'll answer prayers that, that uh, the only prayer that he don't answer is one's not lifted up. We have to, uh, we're going to be uh, trying to preach his word this morning in uh, Hebrews, the 11th chapter. And, uh, some call it the faith chapter, but look, if you will turn your Bibles to Hebrews 11 and uh, Faith is defined. We read several verses here. I'd ask you to stand in reverence to God's word. Hebrews chapter 11. Lord, we just ask your blessings over this service today. Lord, you know, I'm not able to do anything other than just rely upon you to bless this service today. We thank you, Lord, for Brother Barry Linnea and his family. Thank you, Lord, for each one makes up part of Highland Baptist Church. And we just pray, Lord, when we have said to find a man today, you've been pleased with each and every one of us. Lord, I ask you to hide me behind a cross. They don't see a man, but they, they see a, a Savior that came and lived and died for to purchase our sins. And, Lord, we believe in faith that you're coming back one day. And we just want to thank you right now, whenever that time may be. In Jesus' name, I humbly pray. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11, uh, beginning of verse 1, says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report through faith. We understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. It talks about the patriarchs in the next few verses. It says, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and it by it he being dead yet speak. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him before his translation. He had this testimony that he pleased God. Oh, wouldn't that be a way to go? But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. It goes on, by faith Noah being warned of things to come, not seen as yet, he moved with, with fear and he said, prepare an ark to the saving of his house that which he condemned the world became heir of righteousness which is by faith, that faith in Christ and the cross. I won't read on, but all, all this you can see from the verses 8 on through there, it talks about by faith, by faith, by faith. 
And, and it leaves it right there by us by faith. We don't have anything. It's impossible to please God without faith, it says. Lord, I ask your blessing over this reading of your word. I ask you, Lord, to speak, dear Lord. And uh, I pray, dear Lord, when we get ready to leave here today, we can all say it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. For Jesus in Jesus' name we humbly pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Faith is, like I said, it's impossible to please God without faith. Uh, sin sometimes, sin is sometimes called other names. You know, you this day and time we look at uh, uh, newscasts and things like that. They will talk about something, but they, it, it don't mean the same thing as what we think it does. But sin is called a, a lot of different uh, other names instead of calling it sin. And remember, uh, each letter, the, the middle letter in sin is what causes sin. It's I. I, you know. And uh, faith is mentioned 24 times in that 11th chapter uh, of Hebrews. And uh, we have faith in our, our doctors. That's good. We have faith in our, our bankers. They keep our money, what we got in there, safely. We, we trust them. Uh, we have faith in our insurance. We got insurance that's on our house, our car, our life, our health, and everything, and we believe that, that they will do what uh, is required. We, we believe that in faith that something is going to happen that uh, they'll take care of it. We sit down, and re regardless of... Uh, who we are, what we weigh, how light, how small, or, or how big. We, we sit down in a chair a lot of times, and people say, well, I don't see why you have to have faith to do that. Well, if you don't have faith, you have to have faith to believe that, that chair is not going to fall with you. So we sit down on a, on a chair, and, and we, we have faith. We got faith in a lot of different things. Uh, but I don't believe there's a person uh, on planet Earth that believes that the, the, the chair will fail because they have the faith there. They sit down on it, and it's okay. How much faith do you have? How much faith do we have to have, do we need to have? Some people say, increase my faith. And, and, and it's recorded in the Bible, but also uh, in uh, Matthew chapter 17, look at verses 19 through 21. Matthew 17, 19 through 21, it talks about our faith and how much we've got to have. Uh, we look at uh, that it says this is a prayer of fasting and up, up there the disciples lack of power you know they were uh, they brought a man to him as his son was uh, sick he, he's, and the disciples couldn't do anything about it then uh, Jesus answered and said oh faithless and perverse generation how long shall I be with you how long that uh, suffered you? And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was come from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus, in verse 19, and said, Why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because your unbelief. You know, we can stop something great from happening because of unbelief. We can, uh, we can look... And say, well, I believe it. The Lord can do all things. And sometimes he, we say, well, I don't know what he can do about my situation. My situation is a little different. No, there's a lot of people have the same thing. We think we got the only uh, right to have it, I guess. But they couldn't do it because of unbelief, he said. And Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence and to yonder place, and it, nothing shall be impossible unto you. I had a, one of those things, and I know y'all probably seen them, that grain of mustard seed. It's so, so little. I mean, it's on a white background and had a, a, in there, and you can see that black seed in there. But that's how much faith we have to have. I mean, it don't take a, a whole lot of, sometimes we think it takes oh, a whole lot of faith. But if you just have faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, because he knows our heart, because he created us, because he's coming back for us, or he's going to take us on before he comes back. Well, we, we, we went either way that you look at it. There's no way that uh, we're going to lose. And uh, that's wonderful to know that 
He has everything under control. We hear people all the time say, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I'm not preaching politics, but Washington can they, they, they don't have the answer for us. Even locally, they, they, try, they do, they try, but they don't have the answer for a sin-sick generation. A sin-sick generation needs someone that can take care of a sin-sick people, and that's Jesus Christ. That's God Almighty, having faith in Him that, that He can do all things. And when we come together, we come together to worship Him and to praise Him and to thank Him. Uh, I don't know about you so much, but I know me. I was, I was rotten as rotten could be. I, you know, when, when uh, I'd done a wedding one time at, at Bristol Baptist Church, I had an opportunity to pastor that church years ago. And, and as a girl I went to school with, her it was either a granddaughter or a grandson. There's a connection there, but they were getting married. And she made the statement up there that Dale Myers doing this wedding. I, I didn't know. He a preacher? You know, a lot of people, whatever you've done in the past, sometimes people think of that more of what they do today. And say, so, yes, uh, uh, we do. And the Lord has blessed so, so very much. I've made a lot of mistakes during the time. I, I realize that. God knows it. And I ask for forgiveness. And, and he forgives me. We have a, uh, a blessed family. It's not exactly the family I, I, like I wish we were, but when I was growing up, I probably wasn't a son that my mom and daddy wanted either. But Matthew, our, our youngest, he, he had a stroke in September of last year. And I may have told you all this before because it seemed like Brother Barry asked me to come back several months ago. I, I can't remember the exact time, but... But he had, he had a, a stroke down there. It's in New Orleans Hospital. He drove himself there to the parking lot and went in there, and, and they kept him overnight, and the doctors looked at him, and they sent him home that next day because he wanted to get back home for his family. He wanted to get, he had a doctor here, so he come back and, and got back home on late Monday. He had a doctor's appointment on Tuesday. And uh, before, actually, I think he went to the doctor. He was out at Legends. He and Maggie was eating uh, supper out there. And uh, she noticed him and said he, he didn't look right. He, he couldn't swallow his food or something. And what that meant, he was, uh, he was having a, another stroke, he said. And he went through that right there. And, and uh, I'm here to tell you today that, you know, he wasn't, where I wished he had been as far as going to church, as far as his relationship with the Lord, but I'm not the judge, God is. But he, he has uh, since, after staying in a nursing home for several months, after being at home, and uh, they air flighted him the last time to Vanderbilt, to, to St. Thomas, I guess right, to St. Thomas up there, and uh, because of him having strokes, they didn't want to go carry him in just a regular ambulance. They, they, they air flighted him down there. And I don't know whether y'all ever had any uh, dealings with air flight or what, but you better have some insurance uh, to take care of it if you don't. I'm here to tell you, I saw the bill on that thing. It was almost $77,000 for that helicopter to come from Nashville down here to carry back to St. Thomas. His insurance paid... Not everybody's got insurance like that. I realize that. But his insurance paid every penny of it. So we say, thank you, Lord. I mean, what could he have done if it hadn't? Well, he'd had to do it some kind of way, but uh, believe in paying uh, our, our bills and everything is due. But that is something else, too, people do. I know one of the talks right now, and I'm not trying to start it, but I know one of the talks right now in church circles is all these football fans. They're still having a hoop tee over Tennessee beating LSU yesterday. They, it, I, it is talked about about, about as much, I guess, as uh, the Lord is in some, church, in some churches there because we've got some folks there at, uh, at Solid Rock. They're, they're Alabama fans through and through. Yeah. And uh, that's good to have a, a, a sport like that, but I, I'm thinking more like an idol worship. You know, we worship things that we don't even think is idols. A lot of people, they don't go to church on Sunday because they go to see the Titans play football and they have a 12 o'clock kickoff or start. Now, I'm not here to 
say I'm against football. It's got it good in its place. I think it's really good, but but the Lord should be the number one priority of ever ever born again believer. And uh, I hope and pray that he is. But but you know, it, it idols can be uh, entertainment, sporting events. Idols could be worshiping uh, the house we live in, the acreage that we have. The the uh, we was in a home last night and. It looked like one of those things you see in one of these uh, big fancy magazines and everything. It was so, it just looked so good. Uh, Amos built some cabinets in there, and, and they had, uh, uh, is there kind of a, I don't know, uh, would say like a rustic thing, but it was really, really nice and everything. But, you know, it wouldn't be too hard to worship. If you had something like that to live in, you could kind of worship it a little bit. You, you say, no, I couldn't either. Uh, well, somebody... Uh, comes in there and, and they got mud all over their feet and they track it on the floor. You're going to have to clean it up, but you're going to say something about it. You're messing my house up. You know. Idols. It could be anything that you place plus Jesus, I heard people say. How do you say Jesus and Jesus alone? You say, well, is baptism necessary? Baptism, yes, because it shows the lost and dying world that you belong to Christ. It's uh, defined as an a outward expression of an inward feeling. You belong to the Lord. The Lord Jesus was baptized in the River Jordan. But sometimes we, we hold on to things like that. Our, our, our baptism plus Jesus means I'm saved. No, Jesus alone means I'm saved. And I heard it said, and it was talked about just a few days ago, it said I've heard people say, well, I was a Baptist before I ever come to the Lord. And, and I think about that. Man, no, wait. Baptist is great. It's, it's a great denomination. But it, it, just because I belong to a Baptist church don't mean that I'm going to get into heaven just because I joined that church. My name must be written down in that Lamb's Book of Life. And, and that right there, if it's in there, that, that, that you're going. But people today take things so Lightly, I mean it. Uh, you see, people. Again, I didn't come to be a, be a judge, and I'm not going to be. But you can see people, and you can inspect the fruits, as you say. You come to church this morning, you may have seen somebody out there cutting the yard. You see somebody out there uh, got a boat, they go into the river, and all this needs to be done. But what I'm trying to say, the church, Jesus. Church should be the number one priority in every believer's life, right there. But they don't. Uh, they don't seem to want to. But I'm gonna tell you, you've experienced it probably as well as I have. When you have somebody that is sick, I'm talking about really sick at the point of death. We prayed with people, and we saw people come to know the Lord before they died. And people have asked me, well. Dale, do you believe in uh, deathbed confessions? I answer it this way. Yes, I do, but I don't want to be one that's, that's confessing on my deathbed. I want it beforehand. I know it's beforehand. But sometimes, well, it's better to, you know, to get on in there in, in heaven because you called on the Lord than it is to just, well, I ain't got time or things are going to be whatever. But, no, we really want to. want to really be to heaven. Just imagine the things of heaven that we'll see. It takes faith to, to, to know. Somebody asks you, are you going to heaven when you die? People say, well, I hope so. Maybe I will. I've done good. I've helped people. I gave money to the church. I helped people with, carry food into the house that didn't have any food. All these are good. But listen carefully. There's not a good person in heaven this morning. Not a good person, just by goodness alone. You have to be born again. That's what Jesus told Nicodemus. He said, you must be born again to enter into the kingdom of God. But the top priority being Christ and, and him is number one. Not waiting until it's too late. Little faith, as I said, is a type of people that don't believe God will do much for them. Have you ever prayed for somebody and asked the Lord to take care of them, but you have a need and, and you don't pray for yourself or you don't think he'll take care of you? 
He will. He will take care. Before uh, they have to feed you before they even start. Excuse me. I take medicine. I've told y'all this before. Some people say, "Well, man, that's a sign you need to hush up a little bit." But we take drink of water. And Lord, just gets gets to it. No faith. Don't believe God will do much for them. They're defeated before they even start. Try to limit God. Church, let's really get serious about what we're trying to do for Christ and think of Him, what He did for us on that cross. And we read that in Matthew 6, 19 and 21, talked about a little faith, but you shall have treasures in heaven. How to have treasures in heaven? I've got there, read Matthew 6, 19, 21 again. So uh, I think it's so important. He, he thinks it's so important to, that, we, that we just look at that right there. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. For moth and rust is corrupt and where thieves break through it is steel. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, where thieves do not break through or steal. Notice this 21st verse. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where your treasure What is your treasure? Is it seeing people come to know Jesus Christ? We're, we're on a mission. I've heard people talk about we're pilgrims just passing through this land. We're getting ready one day to meet the Lord. You know, Queen Elizabeth, if y'all saw the, the, her funeral and everything, they talk about millions of people saw it and viewed it and this and that. And a well, well thought of person. And what they what they did. But for the next few minutes, just think on this. Well, we have a a, a today or a tomorrow. Book of James tells us in the fourth chapter, verse thirteen through sixteen, he says. And, and folks, I'm going to tell you what, I, I'm guilty of this as, as a lot of people are. Because we'll say something in conversation, well, I'll see you tomorrow. We'll, we'll see you next week. But notice what James says right here, the self will He says, go to now, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain." Verse 14, whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life, is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. For that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now you rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. You know, not as much as, as a lot of you are, but uh, I passed by, and, and uh, I won't get into names because I'd leave somebody else to pressure, but I passed by a lot of times and see the building right here, and I, I remember the folks that's not here any longer. I remember the folks that's gone home to be with the Lord. There's, a, there's an empty seat, an empty place in the pew where they would sit. There's an empty chair at home where they once sat in. Uh, they gone on to be with the Lord, and and uh, we'd not have them back for nothing. They wouldn't want to come back anyway. But uh, but think about what he's saying right here. Don't uh, be guilty of making plans and not saying it is God's will if it's not God's will. We want to pray like Elijah did in that fifth chapter of James, that 17, 18 verse. 
I'm glad Pat's not here. She's fussing me for all these papers I got up here. That's what I do every time. But anyway, I want to make sure the Lord is glorified. And he, he was in the writing on this paper, and, and uh, he knows what it is, and I can read it, but nobody else probably can. I, maybe I should have been a, a, a doctor by the way my handwriting was. No, that's, I don't mean that. But Elijah, uh, he was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Pray. How strong is your prayer life? I noticed there on the screen, y'all doing a David Jeremiah, and uh, we see him uh, a lot of times on TV. Well, Pat, she gets up early, and I do. She probably watches him every morning on his own. And she said, well, you should have heard David Jeremiah. Well, don't he come on at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock? <laughs> but anyway, but things, things is going there. But Elijah, how long has it been since we really talked to someone about Jesus Christ? And I, I point my finger back at me, not at you, because the Lord holds us all accountable. But he, if I don't do what I'm supposed to do, why, why should he bless me? If I, if I don't try to lead somebody to Christ or show them, a, give them a gospel track or, 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 or just tell them about Jesus, then what good am I? And you sit around in doctor's offices, you see people and, and sometimes they really want to talk to you. You talk to them about their problems and, and about the, the answered prayer, how, how it will do and everything. But Elijah prayed. And he prayed one way that he prayed another way and it's just uh, what we need to do is, is keep much in prayer because that's what he wants us to do we we try to do things at uh, at church as a men's director and try, try to uh, I mentioned a while earlier there someone this morning about the, the gum springs men's ministry i miss that they had that once a month and it was uh, a good testimony shared and, and uh, Good singing, the guy from uh, Waynesboro, I can't call his name, but let us sing it every time. And he'd really get into it, and he'd get you into it, and all the men singing. But it, it was something really, really special and everything. But we, we look at this and uh, say, what, what does the Lord want of me? If we just look, look to our, ourselves and say, what does the Lord want? What does he want from Dale Myers? What does he want from Toby Powell? What does he want from Charles Willis? What does he want from any of us? He wants us to be faithful, to have faith, to believe. And people, people use that faith word so very much, it's, uh, it's not, I don't think, right, because they, we, we have faith we're going to win the ball game. <laughs> what? Well, People want, want to win. They want to do this. They want to do that. But, the, well, it's faith. It's faith. Well, the faith, without faith, it's impossible to please God. But I don't think he's pleased with it. If I, if I say, well, I believe I'm going to win the lottery, so I'm going to buy a lottery ticket. No. I believe I, that football team is going to win because I bet my money on that team that did win. No. No, don't tie faith into something that's uh, of the devil because I, again, I say sports program, a lot of people like sports. You, you see on the TV in the stadiums there, they'll have thousands and thousands of people there. And in a real cold weather somewhere like uh, uh, Green Bay where they play at home and, and it's cold as everything there, they used, you'll see some people out there in, without a shirt on. And they'll, they'll have their body colored up or something like that in their face and everything. Out there in that, I'm going to tell you what, they're not as old as I am. Because I'll tell you what, I, they couldn't pay me to sit out there like that. <laughs> Lord, no. But they out there, they're making a statement. That's what they, that's what they, is it fair to say that that's their God? It, it is fair to say if they do not worship the, the living God, the one who created the heavens and the earth, but they worship something else. Idol worship, idol worship. It won't work. It won't work. I don't know your need today. And it's a good thing, probably I don't, because if I did, I'd try to fix it. But I, he didn't call me to fix it. He's the one that takes care of it. I don't know where you are in your relationship with the Lord. I don't know. Uh, 
if, if you, I can honestly say this, I don't know all of you in here, I don't know that everyone in here is a child of God, they've accepted Jesus, they're on the way to heaven, they just wait to call them home, I don't know. But if there is one or more that does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, this morning the invitation is this, you come down here and just, I just want to ask Jesus into my heart and life. How, uh, Two weeks ago, it was a family came down to Solid Rock, and, and uh, they were deer because uh, they were up at Richland when we was up there years ago. This lady came with her daughter and her, and her mother, and what makes her special? She was probably six year old, if that old, and she came to me and she wanted to ask Jesus into her heart and life. You know, so we don't we don't baptize people without parental guidance, you know. But and I said, well, wait a minute, let's get your mama in here and and and, and see. And she told me what she wanted to do. That lady's still serving the Lord, six year old. There's another young guy about that age, walked down that aisle on Sunday morning. I want Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of my life. He did. We have, we have many things to be thankful for. Thankful that he gives us breath in our body. An opportunity to serve him. And this morning, I'd like to ask you to bow your head and, and close your eyes. Just have a time there with the Lord. Just uh, Lord, you know each and every one of us so very close. You created us. And Lord, if there's someone here this morning that's burdened, someone here that's lost, someone here that needs to make a new commitment unto Jesus, I pray, dear Lord, that they would come and they would leave here today a different person, a, a, a person that has victory in their life. We sang about that victory in Jesus. And I just pray, Lord, that you'd have your way in each of our lives. What, what must we do for you've done so much but dying on the cross to expect so little out of us so that we could be with you? And, Lord, we pray that every need will be met. We pray that belief will be believed. And the Scripture says that they, many miracles were not done because of unbelief. Lord, if there's one here today with unbelief, I pray, Lord, that before they leave, they will say yes to you, Lord. For these things we pray in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen.